it's fair to say that no other New Zealand horse has taken on such mythical proportions as Moi Fa. The big gelding story supposedly involves surviving a shipwreck on the way to winning the greatest race in the world, to earning the place of honour in the funeral procession for a king. We'll sort some fact from fiction with this induction. Moifar's story began in Hawke's Bay in 1895. Sired by New Zealand derby winner Natata, he was from a good steeplechasing mare named Denby. The breeder was William Allingham, and Moifar became a family project. Son Percy was given the job of helping to break in Moifar on land behind the blacksmith's shop in Takapau. Standing at 17 hands, Moifar was plain but strong, with long shoulders and depth of girth. His name is reported to have been derived from the Welsh word for swimming. As a three-year-old, he was sold for 50 pounds to William's brother Alf, a successful jockey, trainer and owner, with top steeplechase victories to his credit. Moy Far made a name over fences at tracks around the North Island, reaching a peak in 1901 with 11 wins, including the Wanganui Steeplechase, the Great Northern Steeplechase and the Hawke's Bay Hurdles and Steeples in six weeks. Ownership had passed to Elf's wife Emily before Moy Far finally left the Allingham's care in 1903, when sold for 600 guineas to farmer, gentleman and sportsman Spencer Golan. Moifar was taken to Mangaturata, one of the original five sheep stations near Waipukarau. These are the stables where Moifar was kept. Legend has it that Golan bought Moifar for a daughter who considered him too ugly to ride. So apparently, Moifar took to roaming the hills, jumping fences with ease. He proved so agile that Golan decided Moifar was the one to realise his ambition of becoming the first colonial horse to win the English Grand National. Moifar was supposedly shipwrecked on the SS Thermopylae, sinking in the Irish Sea and then swimming two miles to shore and a reunion with his trainer. Another version has him foundering off Cape Town in South Africa, swimming 50 miles to a desert island from where he was eventually rescued and transported to Liverpool in time for the race. Dramatic stories, but not true. The Thermopylae did sink off Cape Town in 1899. Moifar made the journey on the Marere in 1903. Moi Fa was an unknown quantity, lining up with the best jumpers in the land for the 1904 Grand National. Some reports have him at odds of 25 to 1, others at 40 to 1. There's no doubt though that Moi Fa was a rank outsider, ticking Edward VII runner Ambush II, a winner in 1900. The race's reputation as the one to win in Edwardian England was justified. Four miles, 856 yards, over 30 fences was a demanding challenge for any horse and jockey. 26 horses started, but the odds shifted in Moifar's favour by the third fence with a number of falls, one of them the king's favourite. By the fifth fence, more runners had fallen and Moifar charged into the lead. Jockey Arthur Birch just along for the ride by that stage with newspapers reporting Moi Far galloping over the fences as if they weren't there. By the finish post, Moi Far was well clear, beating Kirkland by eight lengths, with the gunner a neck further back in third place. It was an incredible achievement, not only bringing world recognition for New Zealand bred horses, but a healthy purse of two and a half thousand sovereigns for his owner. To say the victory was a shock it's an understatement. One Liverpool scribe even calling it hollow because of the early departure of the King's horse. In New Zealand, it was a cause for celebration in Takapau and beyond, and their faith in Moifar was justified as his performance more than caught the eye of the King. Edward VII was so impressed, he bought Moifar from Golan for 2,000 guineas to replace the ageing ambush. Moi Fa lined up the following year in the King's Colours, but fell the second time around. He developed breathing problems and was retired without winning for his royal patron. It's here that the legend of Moi Fa once again gets murky. It's long been reported that when the King died in 1910, Moi Fa followed the gun carriage and coffin through the streets of London. 
These pictures show the riderless charger, the saddle empty and the boots reversed in the stirrups. The trailing dignitaries included European royalty. This panorama records Moifar's name, but it's handwritten, the date unknown, compared to the printing for the names of other participants. The reality is the horse in pride of place isn't Moifar. The picture from head on shows the charger doesn't have the familiar blaze. Moifar did take part. He was ridden by Colonel Brocklehurst, who was given Moifar by the king to hunt in the Leicestershire countryside. But they were behind the royal party. Moifar's induction might have debunked a few myths. They are peripheral, really, as the most important fact is indisputable. Moifar was the first New Zealand-bred horse to win the race that has captivated enthusiasts since the 1830s, the Grand National at Aintree. They're off. They jumped away for the 2013 running of the John Smith's Grand National. The 40 -run